Hello, welcome to the video. Today I want to talk about the Sidkick Pico. This is a replacement SID chip and uh, PCBWare have been kind enough to send me a batch of these. So before we get into anything else, let's just uh, have a quick word about PCBWare. PCBWare, they make high quality PCBs at low prices. Whatever your design, they can make it in a variety of colours, thicknesses and a whole load of other options. In fact, there's a whole suite of shared projects where you can just choose one, choose your colour and they'll make it and send it straight to you. But that's not all. If you want 3D printed designs, they can have those made and sent to you as well. CNC routing, no problem. You can have the stuff sent straight to your door. And on top of that, they've got a full maker store. If you want to make anything, then check out PCBWay.com. Okay, so as you can see in that little clip I made for the MSX video, um, and if you haven't seen that, go back and check that one out. Um, PCB Way do a complete range of different services, not just providing PCBs but tools and all sorts. The difference in this video is that they actually sent these to me ready built. Now a lot of people go on there on their maker store, they just get some they get some boards sent to them and make them themselves. But what if you're not really au fait with surface mount soldering? Well, PCB Way can build them and send them to you. And they turn up ready to go, just like this. So all you've got to do is install your pin headers. Everything else has been done. Now what's worth noting here is, I've made some of these by hand as well. And the quality of the PCB way boards are far higher. So as you can see here, um, the soldering has been done by what looks like paste and hot air or a thermal bed. Uh, and so I would imagine that it's been stenciled because the quality is far better than just hand soldering it. And to give you an idea, this is one I made. So, there we go. Now I soldered this with an iron. And yeah, you can see the quality around the, the surface mounts is not as good because I've used solder and an iron. And you can typically see like things like this. When you drag the soldering iron away quickly, it leaves a little sort of tip behind. Um, some of the service mount stuff is a little bit wobbly, but I consider myself an accomplished solderer, if there is such a thing. And I, I have bought from PCB way before, stencils and made PCBs like that. And I thought I'd just try it by hand just so you can see the difference. So let's go back to the PCB way board. There we go. Much better. You can see on the sides of the resistors that it's been done by paste and it's been flowed properly. The result is very nice. Very nice indeed. So yeah, I, I can't recommend these highly enough. Um, for the price they charge you for what you get, don't mess around, just click order. So, the Sidkick Pico, like I said, that's a replacement low-cost SID chip, and it's made by the same people that did um, the Sidkick, which was based on a Teensy, and also um, the, the other SID cartridges, so called the Sidekick. So... Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to show you these. Okay, so the side or SID products um, are designed by someone called Frenetic. Um, he's on GitHub and you can look up these things directly from there. Um, so he originally made um, a cartridge called the Sidekick. And this is one here. And it's a Raspberry Pi based cartridge. And it's a small circuit board that takes a Raspberry Pi and it allows it to interface to the Commodore 64. Um, it doesn't just do the Commodore 64 though, because he also released a couple of daughter boards. Um, here you can see the, the sidekick here. Um, this one goes to a VIC-20 and that just 
plugs in the bottom there like that. But he also made one for the um, Plus 4 as well. Because these cartridges just act as storage. And it can do some really funky stuff. Um, it can play eight SIDs, eight SIDs at once, for example. Um, all, the, all the cartridge types and acts like a, a disk drive as well. It's a, it's a really versatile cartridge. Uh, yeah, it's really easy to build as well. So as you can see here, there's not much to it. Um, it's just some translators and a screen and a couple of uh, buttons in the top and then the rest of it's done by a Pi 3 on the bottom. The latest version was using a Pi Zero and that's this one. So this is a case that I actually designed uh, for the Pi Zero version and it's tiny as you can see. I've still got the plastic protector on the screen. Um, there you go, similar sort of thing, it's just been shrunk down a bit. And again, you can build these directly off GitHub. Um, PCB Way made the um, PCBs for these for me anyway. Um, well, I bought, I bought them some time ago. And you can order them from there. So these were the Sidekick cartridges. You, they, you also had the Sidkick. And this is, this is the, one of the earlier ones. And this uses a Teensy 4.1 to use the ReSid library to create um, the SID recreation. Now I've made a video about this, so you can just, you know, you can look back and you can hear for yourself just how good it is. And it is damn good. So, as you can see, it's a lot more complicated than the SIDKICK Pico, because that is literally all on one side of a board. So it's two chips, three resistors, four resistors, uh, a couple of caps and one diode. That is it. So you can make these very cheaply and PCBWay can make them very cheaply for you as well. If you buy in a pack of five I think it comes in at about $35. So that's yeah that's really good. So the original um, Sidkick, like I said, used the Teensy. This one has got the DAC on it. Um, it. It can do all sorts of stuff. You can plug a, a MIDI, a MIDI interface into it, RGB strip into it. Yeah, it, it was really powerful, but it's a bit of a pain to build, as you can see, because there's quite a bit of bird seed on there. So yeah, there we go. So. Let's get back to the SID kick, the Pico. This is um, using just a Raspberry Pi Pico. So once you've got your board, board built, it's just a couple of um, pin headers and you've got a full replacement SID chip. So let me just uh, get one of those out and I can show you the finished article. Okay, so here we have the SID kick Pico with the headers installed. So as you can see here, it's got a female header on top, a pin header in the bottom to go into the socket, and not all the pins are populated. They don't need to be. Um, so, on the Raspberry Pi Pico, I put pins on here because I wanted to test uh, a few different boards. Uh, that will become clear later why, but normally you'd solder this just on a pin header to this board, um, and in that case you can program it just as easy, plugs in the USB, you drag and drop your DFU file, done. So the features of this, this is a bog standard four quid Raspberry Pi Pico. And the features it gives you are two SID chips. That's right, dual SIDs. It also gives you a DAC port, and that's here. And you can plug in a, a PCM 5102A DAC board, and you can have stereo output going to RCAs or, or you know a, a standard three and a half mil um, jack plug whatever you want or you can have both so you can have regular C64 sound coming out of the monitor port as normal and it'll also send it out to the DAC port as well so all this does is it literally just goes in here like so and that's it. One replacement SID chip. 
like I said, normally this will be soldered really a lot lower, so the whole thing would just fit in nice and easy. But the, this has got an incredible sound to it. Um, I've had a few problems along the way, so what we're going to do is we're um, I'm going to show you some of these and where I've ended up with it. So let's go over to the Commodore. Okay. No, that's not right. That's lost its crumpets. Okay, so as of release 0.14 of um, the Sidkick Pico, Fnatic sent me a message and said it must be my hardware. So. Just to just show something, I've got a, a regular SID back in there, it's a, um, a 6581, and um, I'm just going to try the same file, shadow file, off that, and as you can see it's loaded, off the Kung Fu Flash. Okay, so here we are. We're back with C64C that's open now. The same Sidkick Pico, and as you can see, for some really weird reason, it's uh, working properly. So I guess Phonetic was right, I've got a problem with that bread bin. Who knew? It's weird because some of the tunes play fine. So let's turn that off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this up. And the only other problem that I've reported is um, it sounds like the channel's closing. So when the writing goes across the screen, you can hear the channel sort of go Doof, as it drops out. It's really low, but let's see if we can catch it on camera. see if it's caught that okay so we know that the Sidkick Pico has a problem with my particular junker bread bin um, with the C64C it, it doesn't it seems to work properly so what I've done is I've recorded a, a load of different tunes and I'm going to play a small sample from each one um, the recording sequence is as follows it goes from the 64C through the Retro Tink 2X Pro and into a really cheapo HDMI capture device. So yeah, let's hear what it actually sounds like through a, um, a digital capture.
Okay, so here we are back on the bench. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to assemble one of these boards and PCB way. So here we have our PCB way um, SID kick board, and I've just put some pin headers on and I've soldered it just across those. And all it is 
is these. So these are the pin headers I've used. They're the round pin type and you just snap off the length that you need. So the longer part goes on the bottom, short part through the board. And as you can see, I've just run some solder for it. Really simple. The next part was the Raspberry Pi Pico. And as you can see here, all I've done is use standard square pin headers. You know, the, these you can find everywhere. And uh, all I've done is just soldered them this way. So when it connects up to the Sidkick Pico, the long part will be going through the board. Now this shouldn't be a problem because the length that's left sticking out, I don't know how well this is coming out on video, but is literally down to the length of the top of the socket. So it really should be good. We shouldn't really be interfering on anything. So uh, that is all there is to it. Again, I've only tacked it in a couple of places just to hold it on, but it's re really simple to solder. So all we're going to do is take our flux pen, just flux that up. As I'm old, I'm going to be wearing a pair of uh, magnifiers. This is uh, a little bit difficult to do on camera, as you can imagine. As always, I'm wearing a glove. Solder is 60% lead, remember. Right, there we go. And on here, I'm just going to just draw across here like so. Flux on there. Boom. So actually, we're coming through this side, so there we go. There we are. Now, I use no clean type flux although you generally do have to clean it. But what that means is that it's not that you have you don't have to clean it off, it's that it doesn't leave a, a corrosive residue behind. So there we go. This Doing it this way will reduce the entire height of it. This is going to be necessary if you want to use it in a bread bin. Uh, not a bread bin, a 64C. So again, I shall... Just tack it down in a couple of places. The reason for that is it's easier to move if you have to, or if you get something wrong and you have to desolder it, like this here. See, just got that misaligned by one pin. You don't want to do that. There we go. Now, the three holes at the end line up with the three holes at the end, so you can't really get it wrong. There's full pictures on the Sidkick um, GitHub anyway. So let's just try and do this at a distance. There we go. Come on. There we go. Nice, nice and flush. Okay, I'm just going to stitch this in. I'm going to do this bit off camera because I can get my head closer to it and see what I'm doing. So uh, I'll be back shortly. Right, so here we have the finished Sidkick Pico. As you can see, I've soldered on four pin headers, two underneath and two through. I've soldered, uh, I've cut off the pins uh, across there and there. Be careful if you cut them off. I use a pair of old uh, cutters because it will damage them. Uh, the pins tend to fly off quite aggressively, so watch your eyes if you do that. But as you can see, it, the whole thing it really comes in at about 10 millimeters tall once it's in the socket, and it's ready to go. So yeah, I've left off the DAC and the A5 and A8 header here, uh, purely because if I want a DAC on there, um, I'll, I'll arrange it at a time. And the A5 and A8, well, to be honest, I'll probably solder straight to the pads. Um, so yeah. In a minimal configuration like this, this is all you need to replace your SID. As long as you only want one SID, that is. So, yeah, here it is. A finished PCB way manufactured SID Kick Pico. It didn't take very long to do, so let's get it in the uh, C64C and uh, give it a go. 
Okay, this is the sandwich board that I made just a few minutes ago and I've soldered the headers on. All you do is you hold the boot button down, which is this one, you plug in a micro USB and then you get a directory come up. And this is it. It just has two files in it and it will just appear as a drive in Windows. Now once you download the zip from the GitHub, you'll have these UF2 files in the zip. This is from Sidkick Pico. And this enables you to do different things, like you can have the DAC and the PWM, or just a PWM. And for us, we're just gonna choose just a vanilla PWM. So you drag it over here, you let go, and you'll see it appear. Then you'll lose the window and think, what's going on? That is actually programming the Raspberry Pi. That's all you've got to do. Drag, drop, done. So, let's get this bad boy back into the C64C and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so this is the first one I built. And as you can see, um, I've put female headers in here and I've put male headers in the Raspberry Pi Pico. And that was so that I can actually just make a, a test, test unit up. The problem is it makes it very deep. Um, as you can see here. Now, while that's okay in a bread bin, in a C64C, that's just not going to fly. But over here, this is the one we've just soldered, and this is how it's sitting in there. So it looks pretty good. Let's um, just see if we can fire this up. Here we go. Might help if we had some juice. We've got the UF2 file programmed. And we don't seem to have any. Oh, okay, that might help. Right. Let's try a different one, shall we? Look at that. It's probably not coming out too well on the on the phone camera, but All right. let's turn that down a bit. Yeah, it's not coming out too well on the phone camera, but what do you expect? I've actually sampled this, so it, yeah, you'll be able to hear it in the in the video. So even in a C64C. This is going to be high enough so that it misses everything and you'll get the keyboard back in, which is exactly what you want. That's, that's pretty damn good. So I will, I will double check that. Um, these are the keyboard mounts here. So yeah, does look good. The power draw is about the same as a regular SID. Not a lot of difference, but it does sound phenomenal. Let's have a look. Let's, um... So, what do I think about this? Well, firstly, there's no need for anyone to ever touch um, the swin sids again. They're just they're just redundant. For the cost of one of these, and what you can get one built from PCB way for, the swin sid is dead in the water. This easily easily supplants it. Now, the only issues I've had are with a bread bin. Now, although Phonetic said it must be my hardware, the 6581 actually works perfectly in it. So that's, yeah, I'm not so sure it's the hardware, but in the 64C, this is working brilliantly. I am going to do some more tests later on. Uh, it won't be in this video, but I'm also going to whack it into a uh, C128. So yeah, I think this is excellent. Really, truly excellent. Um, the built-in menu, let's just see if I can't pull this out one-handed. So yeah, um, SYS, 54333, boom. This is built-in. You can change your SID one and two and you can change some other options as well. And it's really good.
it, it just super simple so yeah um i really like it and i want to say a big thank you to pcb way for sending me some boards to try and it's it's just easy to assemble easy to use and frankly with the um with the channel shutdown sound i'm sure they're going to resolve that um i think it's probably going to supplant the arm sit as well so certainly at a cost basis anyway the quality of the sound is brilliant it really is good and after this video after the credits all of the samples i've taken i'll leave the whole tracks so you can listen to it um yeah so there's not really much more to say about this other than get into some of this the links are on pcb way for the project if you want to make them yourselves so you can get the boards from there or if you want the fully made versions they'll do that too and the quality of their fully made boards is truly superb so yeah hopefully i'll uh, i'll make another video once i've done the c128 version um if it goes wrong it might be something to do with um a similar video i've just seen from retro tech insanity who's having some timing issues um but to be honest i don't i don't expect any real problems so yeah excellent so check out my compadres in the video description check out retro tech insanity i'll leave his link to his channel in there as well and uh yeah stay tuned after the credits for full sid tracks thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.